All right, so here's what they discovered. First of all, they, they, this is what got me interested because I'm an allergist, right? All right, so this is what I knew something about. Well, they convinced me, it took about two months of reading when I was doubting everything, that the pollen information in the shroud is accurate. So, this shroud contains three types of pollen that was gathered in the wind that only exist in Jerusalem, <coughs> Jerusalem. 14 types that are only existing in Israel, and 58 types that fit the story of where we think the shroud was. Istanbul, Constantinople, France, and Turkey. All right? This is a picture of one of the pollens on the shroud, Gundelia turniforti, that's actually in a thorn plant that grows originally in Jerusalem. All right? This is all over the shroud, this pollen. All right, now, about three months after they got back from their studies, they were able to examine the blood in detail and find out what was, what was, the, what was the type, was it human blood, etc. So first of all, they found out it was human blood. So what about the blood? First of all, it's AB. That's a rare type. You know that already. And uh, it's common, more common in the uh, Sephardic Jews of uh, Palestine. And then there's a system you probably never heard of, maybe. It's called the MNS system. So it's another way of typing blood, and if you've got an M and an N, you're in the primate family. And if you have an S, you're, on the, you're in the primate human part of the family. So all the primates have M and N, but only the primate descended human has the S on the N. So this blood is A, B, S, and you can see on the white blood cells the X and Y chromosome. So we can see they're actually identified. The DNA can be seen, but it's broken into sections, it's degraded. They're not gonna be cloning the man of the shroud. All right, next point. When all these experts got there, they looked at the blood in the shroud, and they said this is a fake because it was red or too red. It wasn't black. Forensic people know when they go to a scene or look at things later, it's solid black. All the blood just turns black. This blood was red, so it took them two months when they got back to America to figure out why. And the reason is it has a high count of bilirubin. Bilirubin is a chemical breakdown of a product that's inside a yellowish material inside the red blood cells. What happened when they were scourging him and feeding him is they were breaking some of these red blood cells. And in his circulation, the bilirubin was going up, 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 and was being absorbed by the remaining red blood cells that were still uh, in whole, the whole total one section. So by the time he bled those red blood cells out, they had a higher amount of bilirubin. So when they came out, they had much more potential to have a red color, and they were extremely red. So now we have a medieval forger. We had to do all the things I just told you about, including putting pollen from the right place with no microscope that wasn't invented for the next 400 years. And then the guy had to be so smart, he had to know he had to have tortured blood that, from a human to use. He couldn't just use a monkey, right? So you can see how these things are adding up. These are impossible things for somebody in the year 1500 to do. All right, now, this is the big deal. This is the images, all right? All right, so what did the Shroud team start from America do the most important thing? They proved beyond the shadow of a doubt that it is not a painting. The image is not a painting. And not a drawing, and not a rubbing, and not a scorching by laying a cloth over a hot metal statue, and not a photograph, and not a bleaching. Right? Now, they don't know exactly what it was, but they know what it wasn't. All right, here's how they use instruments, microscopic spectroscopy. This is aiming a microscope at the image, and it bounces light off the image. And if there's any part of the paint or any, any element in the periodic table, the light will bounce back and tell you whether it's carbon or sulfur or whatever the element is, right? So the light hit the shroud image, came back to the microscope, but it didn't say anything about any material. So there's no material in the image at all other than the shroud. Then they turned an X-ray on the shroud. Now, if you turn an X-ray really powerfully, it'll go for everything but lead. That's mostly how we use it. If you turn it down very softly, it won't go through blood, but it also shouldn't go through an image of paint or some kind of material, all right? But the entire image was not picked up by the x-ray because it is nothing other than thread. So the x-ray again backed up spectroscopy that there is nothing on the shroud that's paint except blood and mixed products of dust and pollen, all right? So why is the image 3D? They also figured that. All right, now, here you have the man of the shroud, and in blue you have the shroud itself. It's touching on the nose, the forehead, the chest, the hands, the knee, and the toe, right? At that point, the image density is extremely powerful. It's very dark, because whatever caused the, the, the image, which we think is a form of radiation, it was touching it. 
So the effect on the shroud was strongest where it was touching. But most important to leave out the possibility of, of, of uh, vapors coming up from a, from a body, it puts an image four to five inches up from where there is no contact. So in order for information to get from a body five inches through the air, something has to be a radiation. It can't be from touching it, all right? So when you add up all that distance, and the further you get from the, from the shroud to the body, the bigger the distance, the lighter the color. So as I was talking about the BPA image analyzer, that's how it analyzes that difference in color and gives 3D information. So the image formed in areas with no contact, all right? Next part about the image. This is a single fiber made of 200 fibrils. The fibrils are the little components of the fiber. The image depth is only two fibrils deep. So you have this giant fiber, and the image depth only comes down two fibrils deep, one micron, all right? So whatever the energy was, it was so unassuming, unpowerful, controlled, that it did something to the shroud without burning it to a shred. And here's a close-up of the image, where the image is, where the image isn't. These are the big fibers crossing on the, on the cloth. And here is where there's no image, and here is the image. And the darker over here is the blood specks. So you got non-image and image, one fiber to the next, which causes a pretty good focus. Y'all um, ever looked at newspaper pictures, and especially black and white, see the little uh, circles that the picture's made out of? You've seen that like with a uh, kind of little microscope? You know what I'm talking about? All right, all right. So in the real world you live in, that's called pixelization. All right, in the digital world, it's called pixelization. So this is pixelization, but larger pixels. All right, now, this is Father Matt's favorite part. The shroud shows many details of the crucifixion. When I saw this the first time, I knew the shroud was a fake. Isn't it convenient that a person who made up the shroud out of the clear blue sky followed almost the letter of the Bible of the crucifixion effects, right? It was too good to be true. However, when I study the details, it's not quite accurate. The Bible's account is not quite accurate. There are little details that you're gonna see are not possible according to the information of the shroud and disagree with our concepts and the Bible, right? Just find the little nuances, right? So then you gotta say, the medieval guy, again, had a lot of nerve stepping outside of his faith and possibly being persecuted because he made little changes, okay? So here's the little changes. First, we have a swollen cheek from a beating. We have a broken nose with the cartilage moved off to the side. We have, um, this is kind of a big deal, instead of having a crown of thorns where uh, a thorn bush was, was a basket weaved into a perfect little uh, uh, crown by a, a burly, you know, 250 pound wrestler Roman soldier, this is not a crown of thorns. There is no crown of thorns. The evidence is it's a cap of thorns. So somebody went over, picked up a bush, broke some pieces off, slapped it on his head, knocked it with a, a two by four, and it, it is a cap of thorns. So there's punctures all over the top of the head and the side, not just in a pretty little crown, 